We are ahead of the curve, devoted to Christ, a voice for the voiceless, accurate in preferring solutions to difficult problems. We are non-conformists, defining culture, compassionate towards humanity and the earth. We are also extraordinary high flyers who are reframing the world we live in. High life, we advance. So many faces. You know, this is what church um, is about. Unity and diversity. Um, you know, it's always good to have a combined service um, to show that high life, even though we have different expressions, we are one. And um, I'm just going to do a bit of exhortation in that regard. You know, in many respects, in this contemporary church that we're in, sometimes it looks like the church is some big cooperation with CEOs and corporate executives, you know, um, rather than humble, tender shepherds. But you see, the good news of bringing the sinner in um, sometimes is ex eclipsed with the success message. That's why we try to do um, combined services like this to show that the church is about the sheep and the shepherd. God never intended the church um, to be like a corporate organization. Um, he said in Matthew 16, 18, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail over it. Jesus will build his church. Not me, not the pastors, Jesus will build his church. So there is a blueprint. There is a blueprint. And what is that blueprint? Um, Acts chapter 2, 42 um, shows us how. And we're going to explore that this morning. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 48. Although I'm only going to read 42. You can read the rest of the verses just to corroborate what I say here today. Acts 42 says, They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And fellowship is the key to all the things that was mentioned there. Fellowship. Fellowship of believers. There are vital elements that make up fellowship. Now, what strikes you in that verse is the common shared life that was displayed during that time. Even the breaking of bread around the Lord's table is an expression of fellowship. We do that once a month here. Sharing their possessions in common trust was an expression of that fellowship. Daily continuing in one mind was an expression of that fellowship. And they shared meals together gladly in sincerity of heart, an expression of fellowship. This was a community of people who were committed to one another like we are here in High Life. Now, there is a metaphoric description that Paul gave in 1 Corinthians 12. And I'm going to read it to us now. An expression that describes this kind of common life that we share in High Life Church. And it starts from verse 12. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 27. And I'm reading from the New American Standard Version. Even as the body is one, and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Where, whether Jews or Greek, whether slave or free, we are all made to drink of one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, but I am not a hand, and I am not part of the body, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the air says, because I am not an eye, I am not part of the body, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, 
where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? Now, there are many members, but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body, which seem to be weaker, are necessary. And those members of the body, which we deem less honorable, on those we bestow more abundant honor. And our less presentable members become much more presentable. Whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which is lacked. So that there may be no division in the body. But that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers... All the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. Now, you are Christ's body and individually members of it. It's a magnificent metaphor that says we are all sharing one common life under one head. Who is the Lord Jesus Christ? This is the defining character of the church. Christianity is not a spectator spot or a spectator event that just happens on a Sunday. It is a common shared life with all believers. To be part of fellowship is grace. The reason we are here is because of grace. Some of us have testimonies of how God brought us into his kingdom. And you know it is by grace. As Christ's church, we are one wife. In scripture metaphor with one husband. We are one set of branches connected to one vine. We are one flock with one shepherd, one king with one kingdom, one family with one father, one building with one foundation, uniquely introduced in the New Testament, of course. The body of Christ is one body with one life source, and one head. It is our unique identity. There is no other religion like this. None. We are living organi organisms. Dependent on each other. That is our strength. That is our strength. Fellowship is spiritual. It's not an ordinary thing. That's why it's so difficult to achieve. Even in the church. But Jesus achieved that on the cross. And all we have to do. Because he prayed that we should be one. In John 17, he said, he prayed that these ones, as they come into the church, they will be one. They will be one. That is fellowship. And no sooner had he gone to heaven, the disciples started practicing it. They started practicing that concept. Partaking, contributing, sharing, linking together in common partnership. That's what fellowship means. Common cause. Our cause is Christ to God for his glory. Christianity is the image of God. God made man in his own image. And God is a relational being. He's the trinity. There's relationship there. So we are made for relationship. We are made for relationship, which is what the disciples practiced and the apostles practiced. Christianity is not an individual experience. It is not a private experience. You are not meant to live by yourself in a world where you can isolate yourself with massive form of temptation. Because when you're at home alone and you bring out your phone, you can get anywhere in the world. That's temptation. Or you stand in front of DSTV. Temptation. Christianity wasn't made for that. Fellowship is precious. It is everything. Everything about church fights privacy. Everything about church fights privacy. That's why in high life, once in a while, we come together like this to show that even though we have different expressions, we are one. And I witnessed that 
in the preparation for this love feast, watching how people were coming together to prepare food, coming together, donating money, coming together, coming up with ideas, just to ensure that we came together and we enjoyed today. It was a lot of work by leaders that were committed to ensuring that people fellowship together, members speaking to one another, relationships being built. That's what church is about. It's about relationship. It's about fellowship. And we, we ask you to enjoy this event today because a lot has been done to make sure you have fun. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. We are the five to ten-year-olds of High Life Church, and we will be reciting the Bible verse, which is 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, and giving a brief presentation on, of the books of the Bible. This is the memory, memory verse. For teaching us what is true. It is useful for correcting our mistakes. It is useful for making our lives whole again. It is useful for teaching us to do what is right. Second Timothy 3 verse 16. Good morning, church. My name is Talisa Hansen, and I'm going to to be presenting the books of the of the law, which are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Thank you. Good morning, church. My name is Johnny, and I'm presenting the law books: Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Good morning, church. My name is Priscilla Ule. I'm going to be presenting the book of History 1, which are Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 King, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Good morning, church. My name is Paolo Dibo, and I'm here to present to you the books of poetry and wisdom, which are Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastics, Songs of Solomon. Good morning, church. My name is Consuelo David, and I'm here to present the books of the Bible, Major Prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. Good morning, church. My name is Mariana Ule, and I'm here to present a book of the gospel, which are Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Thank you, church. Good morning, church. My name is Damala Omoboya. And <laughs> Good morning, church. My name is Damala Omoboya, and I'm here to talk about the books of the Bible, which, uh, which is history too. Ah. here to talk about the book of prophecy which is the last book of the Bible this book tells the prophecy about what will happen in the final days of earth and when Jesus will come down and make the new heaven and earth thank you Good morning, church. Um, the kids uh, actually were very eager uh, to uh, present this to, to, to the parents. So thank you for indulging them. As you can see, we've been learning about the books of the Bible. 
this is the five uh, to uh, ten-year-old group. We've been learning about the books of the Bible. Um, and maybe I should have introduced uh, what they were doing before they went on. But the science that they were doing is what we've been using to teach them what each book talks about. So we have the books of the law, the books of history in the Old Testament, the book of history in the New Testament, the Gospels, and the signs are what we use to teach them what each book was talking about. So for instance, you saw that somebody was talking about, a pearl was talking about a song of Solomon, which talks about love, and she was doing the sign of putting on the ring on the wedding finger. So, um, and Genesis, for instance, was this. This is where the world was created. Uh, so this is what we've used to teach your children about the books of the Bible. It's been a very, very interesting session for all of us, both kids and adults. I can definitely say I've learned a lot. Um, we've been doing this for the past 12 weeks. And I think what was interesting was the kids were very eager to present to you. I mean, a lot of them were very shy when we were going through rehearsals. But you can see that they came on stage and they were very, very excited. So... Um, you know, for, for some of us who volunteer upstairs, this is our favorite part of church, coming to church and spending time with the kids. You know, you can come to church, you know, on a certain day and be so down. You go upstairs, they give you hugs, you know, they're so happy to see you and it makes it all worth it. So, you know, thank you so much for trusting your kids to us. Thank you so much for trusting us to continue to, uh, instill the word of God in them and, um, you know, if there's anyone who's looking to volunteer in the children's service, please come upstairs, come and join us. It's so much fun. You won't regret it. So thank you so much. Thank you for encouraging them. Thank you for listening to them. And thank you, kids, for being such good sports, okay? Thank you. We can celebrate the kids again. We can, we, we can do it a lot better than that. It's gone. Hallelujah. My name is Blessing Okere, like I introduced myself earlier, and I want to talk about High Life Auburn. If you are within eight, the ages of 18 and, uh, and 24 like I am, can you just see your hands up? What? <laughs> okay, the real 18 to 24 is like, if you, are, you are here, give me a loud yeah. Uh, you are not sounding like 18 to 24. If you are 18 to 24, give me the loud yeah. Awesome. Can we just celebrate them if you don't mind? Yeah. Around 60% of Nigeria's population is under 24. Six, more than half. More than half of us. You know, it's a very interesting country we have. Yes, more than half of us. Nigeria, us. Oh, yeah. I am, I am young at heart. 60% um, of us. Um, of all of us. 60% under 24. And it's a very interesting thing because you have to think about it. Um, they said that our population, we're going to be the third largest country in another 50 years. We're going to be about 550 million people. Yeah, in, 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 in another 50 years, they are about. Yeah. Actually, less than 50 years from now, we're going to be about the third largest uh, population in the world. But currently, 60%, if you look at our population pyramid, less than 3% are above 60 and it keeps going down. By the time you go to the age, age 14 and below is about 40% or 45%. And then age 24 and below, about 60%. So, but the issue is, yes, we have these numbers. But what are the problems that we're seeing? On, that unemployment is a major issue here, isn't it? It's a major issue. Um, our working age, from what I hear, less than one third of us are gainfully employed. Is that so? Less than one-third of us. So you have a dependency ratio of uh, two to one. So for every person that is working, you have two people that you are taking care of. And then the other issue is unemployability. So unemployment is one issue. The other issue is unemployability. We have, we have some opportunities available, but we don't seem to have the people that have the skills to match those opportunities. Then the question is, how do we deal with this? And then the last issue that we see with our, with our generation currently is a disconnection from God. So we see a lot of vices. We tend to be able to copy things that are the negative things that come from abroad rather than the positive, positive things. And it's a, it's a critical issue that we're facing here in Nigeria. You have a lot of violence. You have uh, young people on drugs. You have all sorts of issues. 
and we need to deal with these things. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1 says, don't let the excitement of your youth, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, don't let the excitement of your youth cause you to forget your creator. Honor him in your youth before you grow old and say, life is not pleasant anymore. In High Life Urban, our vision is to impact the next generation, to give them a hope, to give them a future, to help them develop a deep relationship with God, to also empower them with life skills. We also want to connect them with opportunities for internships, for mentoring, and very, very importantly, for jobs as well. Praise God. So we've started this eight-week program, and we started today. And the program looks at um, eight important things. The first one is purpose and destiny, to understand our purpose and destiny in life. And that was what we did today. Next week, um, with the awesome support of our dear sister, Bingpe Ulufemi, please celebrate her. We shall be looking at communication and presentation skills. Praise God. And our dear sister, Simi Wogugu, will be sharing, <laughs> sharing her, let's celebrate Simi as well, her career story. Some of the other facilitators are Bisola Longe. We have our very uh, own uh, CNBC anchor, Wale Famurewa. <laughs> Mr. Marathon himself, Kobe Benchi. S. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable Commissioner Relay Adesino. <laughs> and then, last but not certainly not the least, Mr. Chukuka Chukuma. <laughs> so all these guys are going to be sharing their experiences and teaching the young people, like Bingwe is going to be handling communication and presentation. Uh, Bisola is going to handle productivity, mission, vision, and attitude to set your life in the right direction. She's also going to talk about work ethics, about professionalism, and business etiquette. Kobe is going to talk about money management tips for young people. Young people only. <laughs> they are both 24. <laughs> Can they still come? <laughs> Money management tips for young people. And he also share about his life story, how he got to where he is. And then uh, Rayleigh is going to be talking to us about business writing skills. And then we're going to look at CV preparation and interviewing skills on week seven. That is on the, on the 1st of April. And Bisola Lunge will be handling that. And uh, Chukuka will round it up with the new economy, new jobs that are available in the economy and how young people can plug into these things. Right? So we have some support and funding from High Life Church. And we know that as we put our hands on the plow, at our, our generation, our, our country will change. But we still need your help. We need your involvement. If you have the time, please join us. We're from 9.15 to 10.30 every Sunday morning upstairs. If you can join us, we'll, we'll be glad to see you there. But, and importantly as well, we need your influence in your place of work. You know, I can't just begin to share testimonies about how people in the main church, in the adult church, have helped young people get internship opportunities in advertising and in construction and other areas. So if you have job opportunities, let, that, let us know first. Okay? Send, send, send the WhatsApp message to us before you circulate it. Alright? Um, you know, the Bible said that you should be good to those in the house of God, specifically in your local community. I'm adding that part of it into the scripture. So <laughs> let us benefit first. Uh, the laborer will, will be the first... Uh, partaker of the fruit. So as we're laboring in here and God is taking you to places and opportunities come up, let us know about it before you circulate it, okay? And uh, so job opportunities, internships, if you need a, a PA, a driver, a teacher for your kids, let us know. Some of these young people can, can do these things. Those of us who have lived or worked or visited abroad, you would see that oftentimes in the restaurants, in the hotels, in the service areas, you see a lot of young people working. And they start working over there from age 14, you know. And if you start working from age 14, by the time you are 24, even if it is just an hour a day you work, the amount of experience you will have will be for, uh, tremendous and phenomenal. So give our young people that opportunity as well. Help us. Use your influence to help us. All right? Thank you so much. That's all about High, high Life Urban. So we we'll look for your support and we we'll, uh, we'll thank you. Come on, somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I'm here to give, uh, to talk about um, High Life Community, uh, to express the things that we have been doing and the kind of vision that we have set for 2018. Um, we had a mandate from Pastor 
And we know that his heart's desire and his cry is to empower the youth. Empowerment there has different expressions. Um, educationally, um, skill acquisition, and business-wise. And these are the lines that we have been towing um, from the commencement of 2018. We have identified several sectors that we believe that um, will be very attractive to young people. And one of these um, uh, sectors is obviously sports and entertainment. I mean, youth, the Bible says that the strength of the youth, the glory of his youth is his strength. And we know that young people are very vivacious in nature. They want to be active and doing something or the other. So we have identified sports as a cardinal point um, to attract their interest um, and build our community. So what we have done thus far is we've had um, a sports day in Yanokaja. We did that, I think, two weeks ago. It was very good. I mean, we had a very good turnout. We played football. We had games, chess, Monopoly, um, XYZ, and we had a very good turnout. Consequence of that, we have improved and increased the numbers of who guys coming. If you're here from Yanokaja, let me show you hand up. Yanokaja. Where are they? Yanokaja Bombas. Bombas. Paulo, where are you? Uh, where is everybody else now? Don't shame me now on the stage. Uh, Yanokaja. Hallelujah. So we have, we have built some very good friendships in Yanokaja. And what we have in mind is to develop uh, a football league. Um, our month of empowerment is next month, where we're going to do skill acquisition and business empowerment. And after that, we will move from Yanokaja to Aja, and we continue um, taking our team, playing with the local teams, and we use that to have associations with them. And we believe that as we associate with them, then we can attract them you know, to the gospel and bring them to church. Uh, that is something that we have... We are, we have um, done a lot of research on and we have already ignited. Now, um, apart from that, what we now intend to do is as we get to locations and, and we play with them, we now set up a business hub there because one of our intrinsic needs in community is we need money, we need resources. A lot of us um, are breadwinners in our homes. A lot of us are different place, times and places in their lives um, and we need a lot of resources and we do not want to come to church all the time. We don't want to come and ask you for money. We don't want to be, we know that the Bible clearly tells us that we shall lend to nations we shall not borrow. Uh, and we know that the wisdom of God is just Christ. And if we have Jesus in our lives, then we have his wisdom. So we, we've decided that, you know, from now, we'll begin to take our own future in our own hands. Uh, and we set up business hubs in every location. We have a business committee already, and we're discussing various businesses that we have identified. Um, and we are going to commence very soon. And very soon, you'll be seeing our coastal buses highlifecom.com. It's not from church. We are the one buying it. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Um, and you know, the, the, the thing about it is that there's always an arrogance to feel that those who are in leadership um, have what it takes or we know what to do. But I found out that as we talk to one another, as we have the humility to access that some of the other person has something to offer, we begin to get nuggets of wisdom from people. And the business ideas that we are coming up with that men and women within the community are saying that we should do and the kind of profits in these businesses. Hey, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's fantastic. And we see people standing or, or rising up in a place of, um, of initi in, 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 initiative. And they are telling us, no, we'll get it from X at this price. We'll sell it. Let me give an idea. No, I won't give you. Should I give them an No, no, no. no. Okay. <laughs> see, I, I don't give you. <laughs> okay, so um, every, every unit, every location that we have, we're about to start... Um, uh, a business hub uh, and we believe that as we begin to grow and as we begin to nurture these businesses it will have full expression and so many things that we need the Lord will be able to give us in-house capacity to meet them and then we can come and say come and see what your prayers and what your um, giving has achieved um high life community is very expensive to run because we do buses and each bus average of 15,000 naira. right now Badagri we came with two buses, Yanokaja, two buses. Um, Badagri needs at least four buses. Even for, I mean, right now, a lot of people are le left behind. We cannot carry, the, 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 the pressure on church is, is so much. Now, we have a very, very, ah, you used to be there, my friend, my brother, David, you see, God bless you. Now, we used to, have, we have a team of musicians in high life, and fantastic young guys, young girls, doing fantastic. I mean, if you've been to any of our services, you know that our praise and worship is very, you know, very, what's the word now? Uh, we, we put a lot of premium on, on our worship and our praise because we know that 
uh, where two or three are gathered and where the praise of the Lord comes, goes up, his habitation comes down. Is that not correct? Um, but most of these people um, are breadwinners of their home. Some of them have no other means of livelihood aside what they do. So we believe that we need to empower them and give them stipends to encourage them to come. So we find out that our tabulation of our cost expense over the months are very heavy. Sometimes I look at pastor and I say, you know, I can see him groaning under the you know, weight of, you know, community, but it's really the demand is, is so much. So we, we crave your, your indulgence and your assistance in this regard, especially when it comes to um, our transportation before we start buying our buses, which will be soon in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Um, the month of March is a month of empowerment, and we believe that because lack of knowledge, people perish. And the perishing is that they have no destination. They don't see any vision of their lives. Uh, most of the young men and young women in community, by happenstance of nature or by their circumstance and their environment, they have, they have beguiled their future because their vision has been dulled. And we believe that when the entrance of the world comes, it gives illumination and insight. And we begin to, knowledge will give the capacity to open your eyes to see what the Lord has made available for us. So we believe that we need to empower with such knowledge. Our own ethos is skill acquisition and business empowerment. So we're going to be bringing farmers, we're going to bring in barbers, we're going to bring in cobblers, um, we're going to bring people who have started a business from a very, very subsistent level and have made a major success. So they can, and they're not too far from them. I mean, we're talking about people in their early 40s, in their late 30s that they can relate with and can show them the precepts and principles, what they need to do, because we know that he has put these treasures in earthen vessels. So our month of March is going to be our month of empowerment where we're going to bring in people. And then we're saying to them, these who are coming, that you're not just come and come and give us the rhetorics of what you, can, what you have achieved. You're going to give us assignments. You're going to, part- you're going to be part of the pro- process. For example, a guy who, who runs a big factory, who does biscuits and stuff. I say, okay, you know what? You come and teach us how you start frying it in Oshodi, you know, and now you have big mega factories. Give us biscuits as your agents. We'll be selling it for you, okay? We'll be giving, making money. We need to begin to be empowered. And that is the purpose of our month of March. Now, at every, every other month, we have an activity. It's going to be a, an, a, a monthly activity-based community. So when we're not doing the empowerment series, we're doing sports. When we're not doing sports, we're doing a business program. And we're we are making a network to build a network around Lagos. So we have a lot to do um, for 2018. So we encourage you. One of the things that we would want is your mentorship. You know... It's amazing when it came to creation that, you know, the Lord spoke his word and everything was formed. But when it came to man, he actually put his hand to the grind and formed man. He picked the soil and participated in that process. He didn't just speak a rhema to man. He didn't just speak life into man. But he, 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 he got dirty for the first time. Um, yes, your, your funds are good, you know. We appreciate them. Um, wishing us well from a distance, we appreciate it. But we'd like you to come, you know, participate with us. When you can come early, come for a service. Be a mentor to many. There are a lot of people who aspire to be like you, who look at you from a distance. Come and rub shoulders with them. Come and give them a hug and speak a word and, and walk life with them. At the end of the day, when we look up, you know, we shall see so many sons and daughters that are not biological, that our life has sired. We want to know, we want to have a lot of people calling us father, mother, auntie and all that. that you, you have participated in their journey. So we, we, we appreciate what you've done, what you're doing. Out the, without your giving, we'll not be able to you know, achieve half the things we've done. But we're saying there's much more in there. Amen? Am I talking too much? Almost there. Very good. There's much more you know, that would, would um, be laying demands on you. I mean, look at their faces. I mean, look at them. Very nice. I mean, very... And we are, we are smelling better now. How do you smell better now? Before they were coming, we are, we are smelling better now. We are smelling better now. There's improvement. God bless you. So join us, you know, come 8.30 in the morning. We're 8.30 to 10.30. Come and join our praise. Come and join our worship. Um, if you have, in our business empowerment program, if you have any leading to participate, you know, like my sister that sells fish now, for example. Yeah, let me, you know, husband, promise me money. You didn't give me. All right. You know, that has a cold store. If you, if you can give us fish, eh, we'll carry it to your Nopaja. We'll sell it. Give us at a good price. We'll sell. We, can, we, we want to do business. We want to trade. If you work with a big company and they are doing Indomie, give us at good price. Just give us two weeks credit or three weeks credit. I'm a great doing it. We'll sell it. We'll deliver the money. Empower us. Don't just give us fish. Teach us how to fish. 
You should be giving people that are talking water to drink now. Is something. Amen. So thus far, that is where we are. Um, last Sunday, uh, we're like 100. No, last Sunday, we're like 87. Upper Sunday, we're like 115. Next Sunday, we're going to be 150. Very soon, I've told Pastor that one day we'll not leave the hall. We'll just sit down here. Uh, we'll sit down here so you see what we're doing. But we need to be encouraged. And as we, as we do these things, we, are, we, are, we, are, we believe that our own Father, who sees everything that you do in secret, will reward you in public. Hallelujah. <laughs> Fonds.